Hello everyone, welcome to Abide. My name is Amanda Nolan. I am the youth minister of Restoration Church South County in Morgan Hill, California. Welcome to my first video. So let me start off by saying that this channel is particularly called Abide for a reason. And let me just explain that. So I chose Abide for this channel because I wanted to change the narrative of dating and dating in general and especially Christian dating. I have viewed others who are in relationships and um, they have a hard time understanding um, godly principles and kingdom principles for their relationship. And I am single and I want to be surrounded by people who reverence God and who love him enough to dedicate their relationship to him. So I thought the perfect name for this channel would be Abide. Um, Abide is in the word of God in the book of John chapter 15 verse 7. And it says, If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. And it sounds kind of weird to apply this scripture to relationships, Christian relationships, but I think it's perfect. And I think it directly mirrors what God is saying for people who are single and people who are in a relationship, people are aspiring to be in a re relationship and those who are married as well. So abide means to really place yourself, place your goals, place your desires, place your wants, place your requests, place your life, place your all in Jesus. And his words being placed in you, his words meaning the Bible, scriptures, his plan for our lives. And he said, if you do these things, Jesus said, if you place yourself, place your heart, place your life, place your goals, dreams, aspirations in me, and you place my word in you, you can ask me for whatever you want and it shall be done unto you. So I thought this was a perfect way to apply this to relationships because we can um, switch it to say, if I am in Jesus and his words are in me, I can ask him for the type of relationship that I want. I can ask him for the type of spouse that I feel will meet my needs according to God's standards. So I really wanted this channel, as you can probably already infer, this channel to be a heavenly resource for people who are struggling during their singlehood journey, people who are currently in a relationship and trying to de rededicate or dedicate for the first time their relationship to the Lord, and those who are married who are striving maybe for a relationship that they know is pleasing to God. So right now, the narrative is just do what you want and you're already blessed and God loves you and just hustle, 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 hustle. But I really challenge that narrative because we shouldn't always be doing what we want, especially when it's not pleasing to God. Because the scripture says also, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the things that you're asking for, God will answer them. So this channel Abide is named Abide perfectly because it puts Jesus at the center of our singlehood journey, our relationship and our marriage. And we know that we, when we secure our relationship in the Lord, we can't fail and we will always win and we will always know the pure and good relationship, the pure and good definition of love. So abide this YouTube channel. The message behind it is that Jesus saves. 
it, it kind of sounds weird to say, how, how can Jesus save my marriage? How can Jesus save me during, uh, while I'm single? Or how can Jesus save my relationship? I'm not married yet. What does Jesus have to do with me loving a person? Jesus has everything to do with us loving people because love comes from him. The pure and true right definition of love comes from God. And anything outside of God's love is lust. We're not really striving to know a person for their mind and their heart. We're really seeking after their body to fulfill our own fleshy desires. And yes, God has given us a body that has certain desires that we can fulfill through the functionality of what he created it to be, to uh, find pleasure with our, our mate, a uh, man and a woman married, to bring forth babies into this world, yes. But it's not always about physical intimacy. There's emotional intimacy as well. There's relational intimacy. So I am challenging the current narrative of dating because God has placed on my heart as a single person to tell the people of this world that he is a savior and that he does have a plan for our romantic lives. He does want us to love the way he intended us to love. And that's through honesty, through purity, through trust, through openness, willingness, obedience, sacrifice, submission, all that love is, God is able to help us understand what that is and apply it to our relationships. So I hope that you enjoy this channel. There's going to be several videos following this one to explain my own personal journey, what God has been dealing with me about, and how I have finally come to the point of saying I enjoy being single. And there's a lot of videos of already on YouTube of, of people who are already in a relationship talking about their singlehood journey and now talking about their um, journey being in a relationship. But there's not really a single person really exposing themselves, sharing their heart, and really shedding light and truth to the way God wants us to date or court and be married. So I hope you like this video. Hope you subscribe to this channel. And I hope that you can benefit from my honesty and transparency. So the videos that will follow this one, um, the they might be broken up into two each. So it might be about six videos to follow this. Um, I'm currently in school, so um, I will not be posting videos every single day, but I will be posting them when I have time. I am currently in a master's program, so I don't have as much time as I, as I would like um, to be consistent. But when summer comes, I will be more consistent than I am now. But the, the next um, videos, well, I will be talking about my rebirthing process. And this kind of sounds weird. <laughs> But not really, because people are rebirthed all the time. People are transformed. People's lives, people's minds, people's hearts are transformed all the time. Sometimes we say, oh, we had an, an epiphany or an aha moment or, um, oh, I just found this out about myself and now I'm, I'm, on, I'm in this euphoria and I'm, I can't believe I just discovered this. But for me, I consider it to be a re rebirthing process. And when you're being birthed, when you think about the natural form of, of birth, um, a woman is, uh, is carrying a child for nine months and they go through three trimesters that we already know. So I believe that I, I went through the natural course of, of God rebirthing me, transforming me, changing me, cleansing me with, with water and the redemptive power of his blood. And in the first trimester, I'm going to just going to share generally and go into more detail in future videos. First trimester, Jesus saved my body, my spiritual body. 
And when we look at our spiritual body, it's it's something that we, that God is constantly working on, something that we are constantly working on. It's not necessarily like our physical body made of flesh and skin and blood, but it's about our spiritual body, how we serve the Lord, how we serve God, how we present ourselves to him as a living sacrifice that's holy, that's making the right decisions, that's loving correctly, that's treating other people correctly. Even to the point of learning how to wait patiently. So in this first trimester, God taught me how to wait patiently. Truly wait patiently for my prayers to be answered. So as you can already tell, I've been praying for a husband. And I really didn't start praying, like truly asking the Lord to prepare me for this person that you have created just for me until about like 2019. So I'm 25 right now. And um, I mean, when I was younger, yes, I would pray, Lord, I want to be married. So like, help me to, <laughs> to be ready for a marriage. But I really started looking at myself, asking myself questions. Am I truly ready to be someone's wife? <laughs> Am I truly ready to be in a relationship? Am I truly ready to give my all to a person, to help encourage them, to minister to them, to be there for them at their lowest and their highest? For, for someone to say that I belong to them, I am his, am I ready for that? And I don't think I was ready to answer those questions until about 2019. And once I did that, the Lord said, okay, you want to be changed, you want to be transformed, you want to be ready for a relationship, I'm going to make you ready. I'm literally going to flip you inside out. I'm going to change you in the most miraculous and beautiful way so that when I present you to this man that I have formed, created just for you, a person after my own heart, you'll have no doubt that you're ready and this person is for you. So the first trimester, Jesus taught me how to wait patiently, how to believe him, how to trust him, how not to be so obsessed with like, Lord, please, 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 please prepare me for a spouse. No. How to be content and well and satisfied and still and peaceful and believing in the truth that yes, God does have someone for me, but right now he is making me, molding me, shaping me. The second trimester, Jesus saved my heart. He taught me how to love myself. Now, I'm a woman, as you can see, and women have such terrible insecurities that we place on ourselves that we allow others to place on us and that can be so integrated in our lives and our behavior we internalize that so much to the point where we start believing that we're ugly that we're not good enough that we're not our body isn't perfect that we are not beautiful enough that we are just not worth it and so it's easy for all women to feel this way because we compare ourselves to others and we think that we have to be the certain standard that the enemy has created, the devil has created for us. So the second trimester, the Lord showed me my heart, showed me what I was saying to myself, show, showed me how I was thinking and perceiving myself, showed me how I was uh, presenting myself to the world. And I was presenting myself to the world in such a small, inhibited way. I was not coming to a situation or meeting a person or even going to class in my fullest confidence in knowing that I am beautiful to my own standards of beauty and God's standards of beauty, of course, that I am confident that I do know what I'm talking about and I am worth everything that God has for me. So he, he told me to stop thinking that you are unworthy, stop thinking that you are unlovable, stop defining 
your success or achievements based on a man. And we have all done this. And even men have placed their worth on, depending on like if they have a girlfriend or if they're married. So God was telling me, you need to put your identity in me. You need to see yourself how I see you. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I've made everything, everything that you have right now, all the blemishes, all the different things that you have on your body, on the inside and the out, the way your hair grows, the way your eyebrows grow, the way the, how much hair you have on your arms, all of you I made on purpose and for a specific reason. And I don't make mistakes. So stop looking at yourself as someone who is limited or someone who needs to be small or someone who needs to be invisible because I don't see you that way and I didn't create you that way. So I thank God for the second trimester, Jesus saving my heart and I'll go of course into more detail in future videos. And the third trimester, final trimester, Jesus saved my mind. He taught me to stop thinking that and stop expecting, stop assuming that I just deserve disappointment or I deserve to be hurt all the time or I deserve to be let down. So in future videos, you will hear me say or talk about the story of my family being houseless and financially and uh, insecure and food insecure. And so a lot of those sufferings and, and other sufferings that I will talk about has really weighed me down, did weigh me down. And I expected because of those past issues and traumatic situations, I expected in the future to continue to suffer basically to continue to be disappointed by people, let down by God. God's not really gonna let you down, but being let down by the Lord when the Lord says no or wait, not yet. And I started to behave and think in such a way of like, oh, well, I'm just, it's not gonna happen. I'm just gonna be disappointed and I'll, I'll just live with it, I mean, I'm pretty strong, I'm pretty resilient, and I'll, I'll just get through it. It'll be fine. But one Tuesday, you'll also hear me say that I've, I'm a member of, of a church pastor by my dad, and we do different videos throughout the week. And one video, series of videos, is called Kingdom Woman, which basically means we're teaching women how to be godly, how to be virtuous, how to be a kingdom woman. A person that belongs to God and lives for God and you can see that through her actions through her mindset and by what she says so one kingdom woman in the video my mom said stop expecting to be let down yes you were hurt yes you suffered yes some some traumatic things happened to you but pick yourself up shake yourself off and go and be who God has called you to be. And when she said that, I was like, oh my gosh. God is literally speaking through my mom, who is the first lady of this church. My mom has no idea that's what I've been thinking like for several years of my life. And the Lord was speaking directly to me saying, stop this. Pick yourself up. Yes, all those things happened. Yes, I, and even yes, I was with you during all those things. But let those past hurts, those past mistakes, those past letdowns, even when you um, did not perform the way you wanted to perform, let all that go. Shake it all off and embrace the courage, the strength, the faith that I have for you. So from that day forward, I said, Lord, I'm not thinking this way anymore. 
I am not going to continue to inhibit myself. I'm not going to continue to think that I'm only worthy of disappointment. Because God, you are always performing miracles. You are always doing great things. You are always moving. You are always uh, answering my prayers. You are always giving me the desires of my heart. So life is constantly moving, constantly changing. And yes, things happen. Seasons change. Things happen in di different seasons. This life, we will go through some hard times. But this is not the end for you. I still have more for you. So this third trimester, God saved my mind. And I believe that this is necessary to talk about because as I said in the beginning that we should be praying that the Lord prepares us for a spouse. And you may think that's kind of weird. Like I can, I can just ask someone, we can just go out on a date and then we'll, we'll figure out who each other, um, like who we are, what, what our likes and dislikes are, our interests, and we'll just make it work. Just, just wing it. Take it one step at a time. We'll move as slow as we want, as fast as we want, and everything will be fine. But I, I really want to challenge that because challenge that and say that we should be asking to be prepared. My mom always has always told me since a little girl that we should count up the cost, that everything happens for a reason. There's a time and place for everything. There's a season for everything. And as children of God, if you identify as a person who loves the Lord, who is saved, who is baptized in his name and have received his spirit, then you know that God wants to bless you at specific times in your life. Because we live in time, God lives in eternity. So he has graced and humbled himself to operate in our time to make things happen according to the time that we live in this earth. So if, if I were to meet someone, but God did not count me ready, then a lot of things can go wrong. A lot of things may go right, but a lot of things can, can go wrong. I may not know how to encourage him when he's hurting or you. You may not know how to encourage that person when they're hurting. You may not know how to pray for them. You may not under, understand how to deal with the fact that maybe this person doesn't like this and you don't know how to respond to that. Or you may not have enough finances for a relationship because a relationship costs money. <laughs> you want to go to a nice restaurant, that costs money. You want to get married, that costs money. You want to travel together, that costs money. You want to start a business together, that starts money. That requires money. So there's so many things in the relationship that we really forget about. But God hasn't forgotten. And he's able to prepare us for those things. I'm not saying that we're going to enter a relationship completely, like 100%, knowing everything there is to know. But there's some things that God can teach us so that when we encounter a situation, then we know, oh, I know how to do this. I know to do this. I know to say that. I know how this may go. So let me plan it. Do A, B, C and see how this plays out. Pray. Ask the Lord to help me. So this can turn into something beautiful. Turn into something that God has planned. So Jeremiah twenty nine eleven says, For I know the thoughts that I have towards you, saith the Lord. Thoughts to prosper you, not to harm you. Other version says, to uh, give you a hope in a future. So if God has plans for us, when we want to abide by those plans so that we can receive all the fruit and nourishment and beauty he has for us in that expected end or in that future, that was my prayer. I said, Lord, I know you have a plan for me. I know that you have a spouse for me. I know that you have more for me in this life. So Lord, I ask you to prepare me for that. 
because I, I could not go, I cannot go into a relationship still thinking that I'm unlovable, still not knowing how to wait patiently, still not um, thinking that my mind, that I need to start thinking more better about myself, more better about life, more better, think better about opportunities and things that await me. Because that's, that might weigh my, my spouse down. He's going to be like, why are you so doubtful all the time? Why don't you see yourself as God sees you or as I see you? How come you're you're so depressed? Why why don't you trust me or why don't you trust people or why don't you why aren't you more positive or optimistic? Why are you this way? <laughs> I don't want him to say that. I don't want him to feel like you didn't do any work before we met and vice versa. I would want him to do some work before we meet so that when we come to a, uh, to a relationship, we can work on our own communication styles. We can work on um, some of the things that we need to compromise on as far as like if he likes something, I don't like something, then we come to a compromise. Never compromising on the word of God because that's something we do not compromise on. But we need to be working now, working on ourselves now. And I know you don't want to hear this. I'm sorry. I was that person too. I don't want to hear, oh, you're single now. Just take this time to really work on yourself. I was so sick and tired of people telling me that. I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Okay. You're married. You are where I'm trying to be. Stop telling me that I need to work on myself. But they are true. That advice is true. I'm telling you, it's true. It's real. And it's worth it. It's so worth it when you can look at yourself in the mirror and say that I am pleased and satisfied with where my mindset is, where my body is right now, where my what kind of heart I have. That is so rewarding and it's so beautiful and it's so great. And God will smile on you because you finally see how God sees you. You finally accept that this is where you are in life right now. So this channel, Abide, is obviously about singlehood, relationships, and marriage. And you will hear me say that I really don't like saying singlehood or I don't like saying this is a singles ministry because it sounds so permanent and this is not singlehood or being single, not being in a relationship is not permanent when you know that God is planning your life. So this channel is called Abide and I will refer to those who are single as abiders. <laughs> So abiders, I hope that you can glean from this channel. I hope that you will take my own personal experiences and um, apply those things that you feel is correct for you or true for you. And then just place those things to the side that may not be right for you because I'm not trying to tell you how you should live, how you should change everything about you. I'm just going to give you the word of God. And if you feel that you need to change, that is between you and the Lord. But in this channel, I'm going to be transparent. I'm going to share my personal experience and I'm going to share how God has helped me to accept my status of being an abider. So God bless you. I hope you have a wonderful weekend. It's Friday when I upload this video. I don't know what day it will be, but today is Friday, and I'm so happy that you have clicked this video. And I really pray for you. I really pray that you accept where you are in life right now. Not to the point of not believing in future goals and better opportunities, but you really feel content and it is well with your soul. Because we all know that when we finally accept where we are, then God, that's when God works. Me accepting being an abider, accepting that right now I'm in school and I am 
immersing myself deeply in school not to distract me or not to make me feel like oh this is the only thing I have right now but I'm good I feel good I think better and I'm gonna walk like I know who I am and I encourage you to walk like you know who you are because Jesus calls you beautiful he delights in blessing you. He loves you. He laid down his life so that you can live in freedom without sin. And he definitely, most certainly has a plan for your relationship. So I will see you in the next video. Please take care.